If there was only one habit you could do, which one would you do? Many people will say gym, some people will say meditation, but the point is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you say, because that habit, which you confessed to be the one habit you would do if you had the choice to only do one, that habit, you just need to max out. Just spam this habit that you just said, I would do this habit if I only could do one. Just spam this habit and you'll be good. Today I'll be talking about the 80 to 20 principle from the book, The 4 Hour Work Week by Dale Carnegie, and not by Dale Carnegie, Carnegie, I'm sorry, by Tim Ferriss. I'll maybe have a link to that book in the description. And in that book, it's the greatest productivity book uh, that I've ever read, to be honest. At some point, it's a little bit um, esoteric but uh, it's a very good book. I genuinely recommend you read it. In that book, he talks about the 80 to 20 principle. The 80 to 20 principle states that in order to achieve 80% of the results, you only need to do 20% of the work if you do it correctly. Now, in terms of going to the gym, that 20% would, or in, ter in terms of building muscle, I'm sorry, in terms of building muscle, that 20% would be Training, going to the gym, putting resistance on the muscle and contracting and decontracting them. So doing an intense workout is 20% of the work and that gives you then 80% of the results. The other two things that you need to build muscle is nutrition and recovery. But let's be honest, you cannot recover yourself to have a good physique. You cannot eat your way to a good physique, you need to train. And then on the side of that, you need to recover and you need to eat correctly to get 100% of the results. Who do you think is gonna build more muscle? The guy who has perfect workout in the gym, but he eats Rice Krispie and all those estrogenic things outside of the gym. But his workout sessions are great. He trains like one of those 80s bodybuilders who scream and break machines in the gym and stuff, who bend the bars. He trains like that, but his nutrition is shit and he doesn't recover. He doesn't use foam rollers, he doesn't stretch, blah, 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 blah. He doesn't do all these things. And then there is a guy who only does recovery, has shit training sessions, does three sets with zero intensity, and he does foam rolling a little bit and he stretches and he has those habits maxed out. And sure, he will have 20% of the results with 80% of the work because the time it takes to be in the gym is maybe like one or two hours of intense training, right? So that's 20% of the effort of your day or even less and it gives you 90% of the results, 80% of the results. The point that I'm making here is think about the big habit that will give you your result the big habit, right? The habit that gives you 80% of the, of the result. And then you just max that habit out. For self-improvement, that would be meditation. You can gratitude journal, that's fine. But meditation is the habit. It is the one habit that will give you the most bang for your buck in self-improvement. You will not have a resilient mind, you will not have a free mind if you only journal. Yes, it will be better than without it. I'm not saying that it's bad, right? But meditating gives you the most benefits in the self-improvement realm. If you wanna get closer to God, you can do all these things, right? You can sacrifice, you can go to mass, but the main big habit, the big thing everyone is scared to do or, or very few people do is actually try to read through in the entire Bible. And this is the mission that I'm currently on in my belief. Just think about the one big bad habit that no one wants to do because it's so hard. And that, that habit, you will then see the big guy, the successful guy, you will then see that guy do that habit. 
Do you think Iman Gaji drop shipped his way to making million dollar um, to making millions of dollars a month? You think people get Richard Mill watches because they have a little side hustle? No. The people who buy these big homes and big real estate and yachts and everything, they don't have side hustles. They have their main big business and that's what they put 100% of their effort in. Let's say Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate has one business and that is his brand. Every single other business he has is structured around his brand. He would be stupid if he didn't do that. So the main big thing that he does correctly is build out his brand. People who buy the shit or want to buy the shit he buys or who want to get into Hustles University, they don't mainly do it because they want a coach. If they wanted a money coach, they could go to someone else. But why do they specifically use Andrew Tate as their money, money coach? Because they like his brand. And therefore, the main big thing Andrew Tate is working on is his brand. Would do you rather put 50 kg on the bench and have perfect, perfect form and all of that weight goes on the target muscle or do you rather have 100 kg on the bar, do one or two reps and don't hit the muscle but you hit like the front packs and the, the traps and your joints and your core is messed up and maybe a little bit bicep even, right? You rather put a little bit of force in the right direction than much force in the wrong direction. If you want to walk forward, taking three steps backwards is not the same as taking one step forward. Instead of doing three habits that don't bring you forward, rather do one big habit that you're scared to do that's painful, that takes discipline. But that habit is at least a step forward. Three steps backwards are worse than one step forward if your goal is to go forward, which it should be. My point here is that you need to be focused on the one thing that you would do if you only were able to do one habit. Do that habit. Even if it takes discipline, even if it's hard, even if you don't want to do it, do it.